Hello YouTube, I'm Amy Pennington, the owner and creator of Pennington Design Pottery, and I've decided to start a new series, and I'm unsure on the name still, so if you have a better suggestion, tell me in the comments. But uh, for now, we are calling it the What Am I Making? And it is going to be an update of all the things that I'm making. And so kind of just a moment for me to stop and reflect on where I'm at. I'm looking over here because I've got a lineup of pottery that I'm about to show you. Um, so yeah, let's just dive right in. All right, so first up, are the Flock Fiber pre-order mugs. We went to Flock Fiber Festival and I did fiber related mugs on a pre-order. So I had just had my displays and then had slips for people to fill out and they were able to purchase them there then. And then I gave them a six to eight week timeline for me to make them and ship them out to them. So I have the cactus mug, which is a nice simple belly formed mug with a cactus on it. This is slab rolled and then I took a knit um, roller that has like a knit impression on it and rolled it on there and then attached the cactus to the mug. And so this one's nice and simple, very subtle knit, but people really loved this one. And then we have next the best seller mug this which i was surprised by i thought the next mug was going to be the best seller but this one was actually the top seller for both at flock fiber festival and then i had a short online pre-sale like literally like a day because the orders were flooding in and i didn't want to overwhelm myself so i had to hit pause on it but this was the top seller it is a nice just straight modern looking mug with a nice foot on it. And then we have that same knit roller that I rolled onto the entire mug form itself. And I know that the uh, lighting on this mug is not the best because it kind of blows it out. So I will post a picture up of this mug. But yeah, it was fairly easy to make. I threw the form and then I did experiment with throwing it and then immediately putting the knit on there. But the problem with that was, is that then when I went to trim the mug, um, I needed to trim a little bit of this bottom section just to get it completely flush and just to remove some extra weight. And that then took off some of the knit pattern. So I had to go back and replace that knit pattern. So it did, uh, it didn't really work out best that way. So the second batch that I did, I threw them, just waited until I handled them and then I stamped the knit stamp on it. It did take a little bit more pressure for me to be able to get that knit stamp on there, but I do think that it was probably the best of the two options, um, just given that I wasn't removing half the stamp and having to redo it. So white knit mug. And then we have the floral sheet mug which is my favorite. I stinking love this mug and was really happy with how it turned out. And this has been a labor of love though, because she is so hard to make. So I wouldn't say so hard to make necessarily as time consuming. So I throw the form, trim it, put a handle on it, and then while it's still in its greenware phase, in the leather hard, I have to slab roll the sheep. And then I put a little bit of texture in it by imprinting my fingerprints on it, um, just to kind of give it a little bit of a, a texture, a bumpy, woolly texture. And then I hand build each one of the five flowers. So there's two of the sunflowers, three of the, or one of the blue flowers up here on the side, and then two small pink ones down here by the front of the sheep and attach them all. And so it definitely is a lot of steps <laughs> for this mug. So it's a labor of love. And I found the issue with this mug was, is that I cannot do them in large batches. 
And thankfully my sister helped me out on that one because I had a bunch of these mugs thrown and was not and handled and everything ready to have the sheep and flowers put on, but was not going to be able to put them all on before uh, they were going to dry out. So she thankfully stepped in and helped me out with that. But for future, I'm definitely going to have to limit myself to probably like, I don't know, six to eight of these at a time um, because the large batch thing just doesn't work out. Um, and this is a overview of uh, what phase they're in right now. So I have fisted them and started glazing them. I have all the flowers on all of the mugs glazed. I still have the sheep to do, um, and then the speckled birch on the outside and the white on the inside. I'm going to save the white for last. Um, I feel like that kind of works best. So I need to work on putting on the speckled birch, which is not an easy task. As you can see, there are loads of nooks and crannies that I have to get the glaze in around on this. So it's, a, again, just a very time consuming project. Hi, Sylvie. That's my cat, Sylvie. Okay, so I just want to show you the comparison in glaze, though, from before firing to after firing. Isn't that crazy? It just always kind of, like, blows my mind how much the color changes. It is it's pretty crazy. So, flower mug. Those are the flock mugs. Next up, I have something that I was experimenting with. Um, just wanted to play with textures and I'm kind of inspired by um, the 1900s like hobnail glasses except for this is almost kind of in reverse um, and then I'm not entirely sure what era this glassware is from but I'll show you guys. So first up is kind of the reverse hobnail. I really love hobnail glasses. They're just so satisfying to hold and so I kind of did a reverse on this one. I would love to eventually play around with some slip, which I don't really work with aside from attaching handles and things like that. Um, but I'd love to do a slip hobnail glass um, or ceramic at one point. But this one, I just took the end of a tool and made impressions going down the glass. And it turned out very satisfying. These were actually meant to be mugs, and upon holding them, I immediately decided, nope, these are tumblers. They need to be tumblers. They want to be tumblers because just the texture on them is so satisfying to hold that I didn't want to waste that on a mug, to be honest, because you're not going to be able to feel that when holding the handle. So, tumbler number one, and then tumbler number two. So this is the one that, like I was mentioning, I'm not entirely sure the era on the glassware, but generally you see like this lined glassware and it's just so minimal and pretty. And so I kind of wanted to mimic that with this tumbler. So I did this one in blush and it has a pretty little foot on it, which is just, it kind of like elevates it from the uh, table so it gives it a floating effect and it's just again so satisfying to hold and gives you like a really nice grip on it like look at how cute this is oh my gosh i'm so these were my test runs and these are definitely going to happen so i'm hoping to do these um for probably probably winter to be honest for a restock um I'm just, I'm so in love with these, especially this one. It's definitely time consuming because I am sitting there carving every single line, obviously. So, and I used a ruler. So I just put the tumbler on my lap, stuck a ruler, and then took my carving tool just down along the ruler so that I was able to get a nice straight line. Um, it was very, it was very fun to do. I'm not sure how it will go making this on large scale, but I think it's worth it because I love it. So, tumblers. And next up, I've got 
um, some ornaments. So this is the first ornament, which I'm super stoked about. And if you've followed me on Instagram or purchased things from me in the past, you've probably seen around Christmas time, I make these mini houses and they've been a huge, huge hit. They sell out. I love them. They're freaking adorable. And I'll try to post up a picture. And this year I decided I wasn't going to make them. Um, just felt like I wanted a break from them. But in its place, I decided to make mini ornaments of that house version. And so these have a little wreath on the front and two little windows. And then I'm hoping that the size turns out okay. But on the back, I put a little bit, uh, a little hole that I punched. And the thought behind this is, is that you'll be able to stick a little light bulb from your Christmas light when it's hanging on the tree, stick that in the back and it will light up the inside of the house. So I'm envisioning it being super cute. I hope it turns out. Um, and then I will put a, probably a copper hook on the top. And then I'm just going to glaze these in my usual glazes that I've done the houses in in the past as a nod to them. So speckled birch, black copper, things like that, just some neutrals. So excited about the little house. And then these ones are still in greenware, so I need to be careful with them. My cat already broke one earlier, so not Sylvie, kitten. Um, so this one I put out on Instagram a question of what other ornaments I should make because I only had the houses at that point. And it was actually my mom that commented and she was like, a mini mug. And I was like, this is brilliant. Like, thank you, mom. And it like afterwards seemed so obvious. Like, of course, like I like people, that's the main seller is the mugs and people love the mugs. And so why would I not make a mini mug ornament? So I've thrown these mini mugs and I'm super excited about these. Put the little handles on them which were quite uh interesting to make because i literally pulled these teeny little handles so i'm excited about these i did not put the wire in them because i'm just going to tie um the hook and wire to the handle so that it kind of sits at an angle on your tree and then i decided to take it a little bit further and play around with some other miniature designs. So this is a mini vase. If you've seen my half dipped vases, that's what I'm going for. So I'm gonna half dip this in glaze and then probably hit up a um, Hobby, Hobby Lobby or something like that to get some dried florals to put in it. Um, so I'm excited about this one. I think it's gonna be really pretty. This one, I'm not entirely sure if it's going to work or not, um, but I my thought with this is perhaps uh, trying to get my sister to work with me on some resin with this. So my thumbprint tumblers are also a big hit um, and they're very satisfying to hold. And I've decided to try to make a miniature one. So I think I might try to make it a little bit smaller, um, kind of in between these two sizes, just so that it becomes lighter. Because the goal here would be to use it as a mini wine cup and fill it with probably a red resin for the red wine. And it's got its little thumbprint on there. And then it's got the wire there for it to hang from the tree. And I think just like if we were to fill it at an angle with the resin, it would look super cute. All right, a couple of slab building things that I've been working with is these little light bulbs. And I'm going to turn these into a garland. So I figure probably around 10 to 12 of them all string together. I'm not sure what I'm going to string them together with yet. I'm not sure that I would want to use copper, but probably a wire of some sort. Um, and then I'm going to glaze these in neutrals. So that is just a super neutral, like minimal Christmas decor item because 
I personally don't have a ton of Christmas stuff around my house, though I absolutely freaking love Christmas. I've already listened to Christmas music in August, not gonna lie, but I don't have a ton of space and I do get like kind of overwhelmed by like a lot of stuff. So I like to have more minimal decorations. And so I thought like doing these in like the white and speckled birch and things like that would be super minimal and cute. And then the next slab building item that I've been working on are tiles. So I have been making lots of these. I think I've currently made about 55 of them. And these will be for our bathroom at some point. Um, we've slowly worked to remodel our house that was built in the 90s and really hadn't been touched since. And so we've been here for four years and we still haven't touched the bathroom. And in a way, I'm sort of glad because it gave me the opportunity to like wait, learn pottery and now be able to make my own tiles. So I did these in a hexagon and then took the um, took a roller like a, a slab roller and rolled the edge to give it a beveled edge so that it's just a little bit softer. So I think these will turn out super cute. I wasn't like super picky about making them all perfect because I did want that handmade effect to them because they are handmade. So they've got little lumps and bumps here and there and not every edge is exactly straight and perfect, but I think it's gonna turn out pretty good. And then I left the canvas texture on the back so that the grout has something to stick to. Next up is I have been working on a new uh, dinnerware set for my own home. So I actually started a set probably about two years ago, I think, and decided that since my skills have progressed and my style has like kind of been nailed down, I decided to redo it. <laughs> so I wasn't completely done with this set. I had, um, I think a total of 12, 10 or 12 pasta bowls and breakfast bowls and a few mini bowls um, for like sauce dipping and then um, some dinner plates. I think I only had four made. And so instead of co completing that set just because I didn't feel like I was 100% in love with it and it was going to be hard for me to remake some of the items that I hadn't completed like the dinner plates um, because my skills have progressed, I decided I'm just going to start anew. So I originally had a set in Lagoon Green and I can post a picture up here, um, but I've decided to remake it in the red stoneware clay, which I've really been loving and I think will just hold up and look beautiful forever. And I've changed the design a little bit. So the previous plates didn't have a very large lip. And I found that it was kind of hard when you're eating dinner and you know you want to scoop your fork against like the rim of the plate and there's really not much of a rim there. So you end up having to use like your fingers or a knife. So I wanted a deeper rim on these um, so that you have something to scoop against. And I really like how it turned out. So these are in the bisquare phase at the moment. Um, and I've decided to make a set of 10 and these are going to be dipped in white glaze. So I'm still waiting to kind of pin down exactly what white glaze I'm going to replace um, because my previous white glaze was having some issues, um, my white dipping glaze. So, and I definitely think I want to dip these because it's just so much quicker and so much easier. Um, so I'm waiting on that, but I have a good chunk of it done. Um, I think I have to remake a few of the salad plates and then that's kind of it. Um, it will all be ready to either bisque or it has already been bisque. So dinnerware set is what I'm working on. And then the last item that I have to show you is not the actual item itself because it's wrapped up in some plastic, hasn't put a handle on it yet, is just didn't want to bring it in. 
but I wanted to show you something that I made to help make that item. So when I was thinking of fall restock, um, I actually wasn't even planning to do a fall restock, but I had in my head some mugs and really just felt like I wanted to make these mugs. And so now we're going to be having a fall restock. I don't know exactly when, but this is one of the stamps that I made for one of the mugs. So I took some red clay, which the mugs that I'm making are in the red clay. So I took it, just kind of hand formed it and then let it dry out a little bit. And then I came back when it was leather hard and carved out this little ghost and he is just so cute. So now I have a ghost stamp. I will eventually bisque this in my next load, but I found for now it was totally fine just to use it um, in its greenware phase. So that's what I did and it worked out pretty well. Um, I do think that I would probably make the lines a little bit sharper next time. Um, but all in all, it worked pretty good. I made two different sizes of the ghosts and then I also made a pumpkin and it worked out pretty well. This was my first time making stamps. Um, previously I've had stamps 3d printed, um, but decided to try my hand at just making them from clay. So not too shabby. All right. And with that, that's kind of the gist on what I'm working on at the moment. I just finished up two wholesale orders and got those shipped out yesterday. So that felt good to get those out of the way. And I'm just going to kind of continue to work on my own personal things and items for upcoming restocks rather than taking on any other wholesale orders at the moment, just because we have a road trip coming up later in fall and just feel like I don't want to overwhelm myself at the moment and kind of want to lean into the creativity of being able to make some new fun items. So I hope that you've enjoyed this update and I hope that you follow along on my other socials as well so that you can get updates as to when these restocks happen because I think they're going to be super fun. So thanks for watching. Bye YouTube.